Christ is our font of mercy. It's a beautiful song we sing. It's the promise of the Lord, the outpouring of divine mercy. We are so blessed to welcome Father Rob Ramser back to our community. He'll come to you virtually for the next nine days at three o'clock and at seven o'clock to offer a soul-stirring message, reflection about the overwhelming mercy of God. Please join me as we welcome Father Rob and together we enter into this Divine Mercy Novena. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce the news to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priest all that had happened. The chief priest assembled with the elders and took counsel. Then they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him while we were still asleep. And if this gets to the ears of the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. The soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has circulated among the Jews to the present day. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue on our pilgrimage of mercy, this novena of mercy, during what the church calls Eastertide, these 50 days of celebration. 40 days of Lent give way to 50 days of Easter joy. And in today's gospel, there's a line that I really love and it struck me. When Mary Magdalene met Jesus and greeted him along with the other Mary, they approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. They recognized the risen one and accorded him his due. He is Lord. He's King of Kings, the creator of the stars of night, the master of the universe, who died on a cross for us, who went face to face with the powers of hell and reminded us that hell has no power. 
He opened those gates, brought forth all those bound in chains into the glory of heaven, and appeared risen and merciful. And what does Jesus say to these women, to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary? What does he again say to us? This is a theme of mercy that goes again and again in these Easter Gospels. Do not be afraid. Why are we afraid of Jesus Christ? Yes, we should have a healthy fear of God. God is God, we are not. None of us spell our name G-O-D, and I don't expect us to. But are we overly afraid of Jesus? Afraid of meeting him where we are? Afraid of bringing him that worry, that sin, that pessimism, that doubt, that hopelessness? Afraid of being honest with Christ? In the midst of this pandemic, we might be saying, Lord, where the hell are you? What's going on? I need you. Don't be afraid of being honest with Christ. He is there. He tells us, be not afraid. And we must trust in him with our whole heart. And that means even, be not afraid with this financial instability. I will be with you to guard you and guide you. Be not afraid, even though you cannot visit your loved one who is in a nursing home or may be ill. I am with them. I am with you. Be not afraid even, as difficult as this is, if someone you love dies and you can't attend to their funeral as you would like. Remember, no one dies alone. Be not afraid. I welcome them into my Father's house. Be not afraid. For he knows our pain. He knows our sorrow. Remember, The risen one still bears the wounds taken out of love on his hands, his feet, his pierced side. He still bears wounds. He knows human suffering, but he's victorious over it. He reminds us that suffering comes to an end. This time of being stuck in place, this time of fear of pandemic will end. When? We don't know. We know God is with us. And just as God brought joy and mercy and hope and repentance and forgiveness and everything phenomenal out of a bloody crucifixion, God's going to bring the same out of this time of pandemic. When we again can open the doors and join our brothers and sisters in prayer, let's fill these houses of God. Let's receive the bread of life, our strength for the journey. Receive him who makes us whole. But until that point, we do pray in spiritual communion. We check in on our neighbors by phone calls or letters. There have been beautiful moments of mercy with parades in front of houses of sick children or people gathering outside nursing homes to sing happy birthday or happy anniversary of just calling someone you haven't called in ages to say what's up. Those are moments of being not afraid. Those are moments of joy. Those are moments that tells the powers of darkness, you're still defeated. Get behind me. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Give me mercy, O God.